Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 8th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Fortinet and NetLab360 both posted blog posts describing a newer variety of IoT botnets. Now, mentioned uh, earlier this week how a lot of uh, these sort of uh, botnets in for iot devices are blending together uh, this one is i think uh, substantially different than what we typically see so typically we do see these uh, botnets that uh, use standard iot vulnerabilities or uh, weak sh passwords and then essentially run a small binary to very quickly scan for other systems what's Sort of different here uh, with this bot that uh, NetLab360 calls WS0 and uh, Fortinet calls a zero bot is that first of all it's written in go uh, that's not very common for these iot uh, botnets even though we are seeing more and more malware being written in go secondly it uses a command control channel where a lot of these sort of simpler mirai style botnets don't really have that kind of command and control channel and the command and control channel uses the web sockets protocol so not just simple http request also web sockets over a tls about 20 different vulnerabilities are being targeted by this botnet again sort of your classic uh, iot style camera router and such vulnerabilities other little specialty here the botnet also has provisions for attacking windows systems most of these iot botnets only go after linux but here if it happens uh, to infect a windows system it will copy itself to the startup folder versus the standard etsy init d4 linux and if you're using cacti in order to manage and monitor the performance of your services well uh, there is an unauthenticated command injection vulnerability that has been patched in the latest version released this week cvss score of this vulnerability is 9.8 not surprising for a command injection vulnerability and uh, the remote underscore agent.php file is affected. It's actually a fairly a basic and straightforward vulnerability here. In order to provide some access control, what uh, this uh, function is checking is whether or not the command is being received from an authorized source, which is either then identified in a configuration file by IP address or host name. Now, in order to figure out the IP address where the request came from, the software is looking at various headers, but uh, some of the request headers, well, it can easily be spoofed by an attacker, things like X forwarded header, X forwarded for header and such. So uh, with that, an attacker is able to essentially claim to be an authenticated IP address if they're actually not sending the request from an authenticated IP address. So exploitation will require a little bit of work because the attacker has to figure out what those authenticated IP addresses are. Uh, but still, once uh, the attacker uh, gets past that hurdle, it's pretty straightforward. And then we got updates for Wireshark, Wireshark 4.0.2 and 3.6.10. Two vulnerabilities are being addressed here. They're both denial of service vulnerabilities where essentially a bad packet can sort of cause infinite uh, loops. Overall, the bugs being addressed here are pretty much the same in both uh, versions. And Apple today announced updates for its iCloud service that will be released next year in order to add some security improvements. First of all, if you're using iMessage, it will be easier to verify if you're actually uh, interacting with an authentic uh, user secondly if you'll be able to use a hardware security key to protect your iCloud account and lastly iCloud backups will be end-to-end -end encrypted so not even Apple will have access to them anymore this has been sort of an often cited weakness uh, because these iCloud backups have often been used by uh, law enforcement 
Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.